everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room Channel and this is your tip of the week. Whenever I'm starting a sewing project, I like to bring out all of the threads I think I'm going to be using on it. I like to get all of my bobbins wound up first before I even start, especially if I'm making a large quilt. You will need a lot of bobbins filled. This neat little accessory is for my Viking sewing machine. And this is an extra piece that you buy. It doesn't automatically come with the sewing machine. And it holds up to eight spools of thread. So what I usually do is I'll take a couple of them. I'm getting everything ready for Christmas. And I'll fill up a bunch of bobbins in the colors I think I'm gonna use the most. These are some uh, burnt orange colors that I use a lot on my fall fabrics. And then over here I have larger spools of thread and even some yellow because I use it on both Christmas and fall. Now on my baby lock sewing machine, I have a crescendo. There was an accessory piece that's similar to this, but it only holds two spools of thread, which is better than none at all. But it also has an extra little holder for when you are winding your bobbin. So I can hold up to three extra spools of thread. And then there's another little spot where I can maybe put one extra bobbin. Now, the time of the year that this video is being made is in the summer. And I'm already working on fall and Christmas sewing projects. And as you're putting your gift list together and you want to make a lot of things, consider semi-homemade. For instance, this is a placemat I bought at Walmart and this is from the Pioneer Woman collection. She has absolutely beautiful things to buy. But I added the red rickrack and so it just made it pop. So if you're a beginner, this is a great choice to do. Start with something really basic. Now also, there was the Pioneer Woman towel. I added not only the rickrack at the bottom, but a narrow strip of check fabric and just stitched it at the bottom. So you could give something like this as a set, but it doesn't stop there. You can even make napkin holders. These are real easy to make. And then you could add into it, let me turn this the other way, the Pioneer Woman napkins. So you would have the napkin rings and all of these other pieces as a gift set. I'm going to be talking a lot about panel fabric to make your gift sewing projects much easier and can go faster. This is a type of fabric you can use on a semi-homemade project. For instance, buying a plain placemat with no print on it, you could cut any one of these rows out, whichever one you wanted or even two, and turn the edges under and stitch it onto either the lower edge or the side edge of your placemat and it will be just a beautiful project. It'll, it'll make it look like you made it all yourself. So start looking at panel fabric. Here are some pot holders with appliques that I've put on it. A double heart, a butterfly, a shamrock, and sun bonnet sue. And all of these little pieces were stitched on separately. Now these are fun to make, but they do take a lot more time. So I'm gonna get, show you some ideas that you can do to do applique projects on any of your Christmas presents that'll make it go by faster and a lot easier. This is Christmas panel fabric, and what it is is that it's meant to uh, use them as ornaments on your Christmas tree. You stitch the two sides together, stuff it a little bit with polyfill, and hang it on your tree. They also have this type of panel fabric for the fall season. One of the best places to find panel fabric, I've discovered something new, is Etsy. Dot com. That's E-T-S-Y dot com. You go in and you enter fall panel fabric, Christmas panel fabric, 
and dozens and dozens and dozens of different types of panel fabric will appear. So you will find things like this in there. Now, if you're interested in using this as appliques, and I'll show you a sample in a moment, is you need to look now because I was just in there yesterday. I picked out one, other, one that looks similar to this, put it in my shopping cart. It was available. By the time I went to check out, it was gone. It was not there. So there's low quantities now. So these are fun and really easy to make. So let me show you a sample. Both of these I cut out from that panel you were just shown and placed it onto a mug rug and a drink coaster. You can even put it on pot holders and placemats, anything else you want. And you can just do a very basic applique stitch on these. Now, if you're looking uh, to make this, I will have a tutorial be re released pretty soon. It's already been made, but it's still in uh, production as far as video editing and all that. But you will see one on like this. And so start looking for your panel fabric now. These are sample applique stitches from my Viking sewing machine. This is the one that I use to stitch this piece down. All computerized sewing machines have at least one or more applique stitches. You could do a zigzag stitch or even just a straight stitch close to the edge all the way around. This is more panel fabric that I have and I like using pieces like this for either making pot holders and they're great for drink coasters. Not all your coasters have to be square. I've cut mine into triangles, round, rectangle, very odd shapes. And these are so cute and they're very, very whimsical, kind of a conversation piece. And then look at these. These are also absolutely perfect for drink coasters during the holiday season. So go into Etsy and see what you can find. This is some fabric that's got a lot of glitter on it. So I wouldn't use it on a pot holder because the heat will probably make the glitter all come off. But as you can see, I've cut a lot of them out. I use them on appliques. You can make a beautiful table runner with different Christmas trees going right down the full length of the runner. Here's some other large print and this just screams out at me, applique. So you could cut these out cut at least a quarter of an inch away out from the ed ed edges of this. And you don't have to cut perfectly into it. You can go out in a roundabout way and applique them onto a quilt, pot holders, drink coasters, table runners, anything that you're making. You can also make these into Christmas tree ornaments. Now here is some more large print. And you could cut these out. Again, remember, you don't need to cut in real close. You can just kind of give it a kind of an odd shape to it. But what I like about this particular fabric is it has little sayings on it. Autumn, harvest, and it's fun to cut those out and put them into drink coasters. Now, here is one. I wish I still had some of this fabric. I didn't buy enough of it. and. I cut it up and used it on so many things. So it's fun to put things like this into your placemats or pot holders because of the large print and the very bold print on the sayings that it says. Now, many of you know that I'm very fond of fabric with roosters on it. And this was sent to me by a viewer last year and I just thought it was so cute. And what I like about it is if you cut this out, you can make a really fun and cheerful uh, pot holder. You can make them so that they hang on the wall. They're very, very decorative. You can also put a row of this on the bottom edge of a towel for the kitchen. The next few pieces of fabric or panel fabric that I've had for a very long time, 20 years, and every year I'm going to say I'm going to make something out of it. And if you've been wanting to get started in quilt as you go, these are perfect for making a fall-autumn 
quilt. It makes a great gift. And also it just will look really nice on your sofa. You just cut these squares out, go out a little ways. You could put a border around it if you want to, but even if you don't, it'll still look great in a quilt as you go. Here's another one. And by the way, you can do pot holders out of these too. This is also great for quilt as you go. You just cut a little ways on the outside edge of this, anywhere from a quarter inch to a half inch, whatever you want to do. Use that as your seam allowance. And also don't forget to make pot holders out of these. This is border fabric. It only has it on one side of the uh, fabric itself. And if you look over to my right shoulder, you'll see an apron hang hanging there. And I used this border print on the bottom. But if you want to make a table runner, looking for border prints is a great way to go. You just cut one long piece of fabric, put some fabric on the back, either heavy iron-on interfacing or cotton batting or fleece, and you've got a table runner that looks like you spent a lot of time on it. I think this is beautiful panel fabric, but it's also border. You could use this on a quilt to put a border around your quilt, or like I did, I just cut a long strip, whatever width I wanted. I think I went from here over to here and made a beautiful table runner out of it. This is pillow panel fabric. And sometimes you'll find panel fabric that's placemat size. But with this, you could either make four pillows out of it or two. And what I mean by two is you would take this one and this one, stitch them together so they look the same on the front and back, or on all four, put a different color, maybe some plain fabric on the back and you can get four pillows out of this. I have done a tutorial on making pillows out of panel fabric. Here is some fall fabric and Christmas fabric. And as a time saver, you could take the two different seasons, stitch them together. So you would have this on one side and this on the other side. And what you want to do with it is, I used heavy iron-on interfacing on one of them, uh, fused it on the back. You can even use fleece or cotton batting if you want to. And then I pinned these two together. So let me show you what that looks like. So I've layered them. I brought front sides together. Here on the back side is my heavy iron-on interfacing. And you can use whatever you want on this. And then you're going to pin it all the way around on all of the edges. Then you're going to indicate an opening. So I would need an opening large enough for my hand to go through. You're going to start over here, back stitch, stitch all the way around all four edges, a quarter of an inch seam. Trim a little bit of fabric off of all four corners down to about an eighth of an inch wide. This will help the corners to lay a lot flatter. Then you're going to reach inside your opening between the two pieces of fabric right there. Turn it front side out and then poke your corners out. Press it flat and at the opening you want to turn your opening edges in a quarter of an inch and then you're going to stitch that closed but you're going to go around all four sides stitching about an eighth of an inch or less away from the edge and there you have a two-sided placemat for both seasons. If you're a beginner and you want to get started in quilting one of the best ways to get started is using one giant piece of panel fabric. Now I bought this last year from Joanne Fabrics and Crafts and Joanne's usually at Christmas time will have one or two different panel fabrics for making a quilt. You can add a border to it on all four sides or not and then all you do need to do is finish it off like you would any other quilt. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tip of the week. It was meant to inspire those of you who are beginners on how to get started in doing all these projects. One of the biggest 
comments or the most common comment I get from beginners is, I've been watching you a long time and I think I've just now got the courage to start a project. And one of the best ways is, is with this panel fabric. So just dive in, just do it. Now, if you're interested in learning how to do any of this stuff, you wanna check below your YouTube screen for video links to playlists for all the Christmas and fall tutorials that I have. Now, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, and this is Scotty. See you next time.